eighth grade. Today's demonstration is going to be on cinnamon rolls. We're going to break this lab up into two days. On day one, you'll be making your cinnamon roll dough and you will be pre-measuring your filling for your cinnamon rolls. On day two, you are going to punch down your dough, make sure that you spread that out into a rectangle, melt your butter, put the filling in there, roll it up, put the cinnamon rolls, and then bake them, frost them, and enjoy them. A couple tips. Day one, make sure that when you heat up your milk that it is not too hot. Um, but that it is warm enough so that the yeast can do its thing. Yeast is going to be the leavening agent that we use in this recipe. Um, so the carbon dioxide that it gives off is going to make the cinnamon rolls rise. We're going to start by listing the ingredients found in dry storage on day one. For items found in dry storage day one, we have all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, kosher salt, fast rising instant yeast, two packets, brown sugar, can be light brown or dark brown sugar, cinnamon. For day one ingredients found in the fridge, we have milk, we have butter. Make sure that you get six tablespoons total but then you cut them into a four tablespoon piece and a two tablespoon piece. You're also gonna need an egg. For day one tools and equipment, you're going to need your stand mixer. It looks like this or like this. And you're also going to need the bowl that comes with it. Uh, that is underneath your sinks. Everything should be under there. You are also going to need a dough hook attachment. It looks like this. You're going to need a one cup, one third cup, and one quarter cup measuring cup. You'll need a spoon to fluff up your flour to measure it properly. You're also going to need something with a straight edge to scrape off the excess flour when you measure. You're going to need a liquid measuring cup, two small glass bowls, two small mixing bowls, one large mixing bowl, and some plastic wrap. For the cinnamon sugar filling on day one, you're going to need a small plastic bag. You'll need a one teaspoon measuring spoon. You'll also need a label with the date, your class period, whether your A or B day, and then your kitchen number and color. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get two small mixing bowls and measure two cups of flour into each bowl. So two cups of flour in this bowl, two cups of flour in this bowl. Remember, our focus is on measuring, so make sure that you use a spoon to fluff up the flour. Make sure that you overfill your flour cup first, and then make sure that you level it off with something flat. I use the back of this knife and it will get you that perfect measurement. Next, I'm gonna measure one third of a cup of granulated sugar. Remember, you can just scoop in the dry measuring cup and then level off granulated sugar. I'll then measure one teaspoon of kosher salt. You'll also need two packets of fast rising instant yeast. The yeast will look like this. So, right now I am at my household and I do not have a stand mixer. So I'm gonna use this big mixing bowl as my stand mixer. And what I did here, you guys at school are going to make sure that you use your stand mixer bowl. It's the silver one. You are going to put your two cups of flour. So you have one big bowl with flour. You still have those two other cups reserved over there. So two cups of flour, your sugar, your salt, and your yeast. You'll want to whisk together the mixture. You're gonna measure one cup of milk in your liquid measuring cup, and then you're going to warm that up in a microwavable bowl until it is warm, not hot. 
Crack one room temperature egg into a small bowl. Next up, you'll melt four tablespoons of butter in a microwavable bowl. Make sure you take the wrapper off. Um, and then your melted butter and warm but not hot milk. You're also going to put the egg in there at the same time. And then you are going to use the dough hook attachment on your stand mixer. I'm gonna have to do this by hand here, but that's how you will do it at school. All right, like I said, you're going to be doing this in a stand mixer with a dough hook attachment, but I'm going to give this a mix now. You're going to start adding some of the flour from that other two cups that you measured until it becomes just a tacky dough. Don't forget to add your egg in there. So this is what my dough looks like. It is barely even a dough. I'm definitely gonna have to add quite a bit of flour to it to make sure that it becomes a cinnamon roll dough. I added about one cup of the flour mixture and now I'm gonna give it a mix and see where we're at. I can see that I'm getting better, but it's still sticking to the bottom of the bowl right now. So I'm gonna keep adding flour. Okay, so this is what it's supposed to look like. Your finger should not come off all doughy. Um, it should be able to leave an imprint um, at the beginning. And then this is going to actually get really springy because you're going to need to either A, knead it by hand, or B, uh, knead it with the dough hook attachment of your stand mixer. All right, I'll see you when I'm done kneading. So I've been kneading my dough for about five minutes. It springs back a little bit when push, but I think we're gonna continue to knead it just a little bit longer. All right, it looks good. It's springy and it's really soft when you push into it, like you can still move it. Uh, that means that it is not overworked or underworked. At this point, you're going to liberally spray all parts of your bowl. Put your dough in there, and then you're also going to give the top of the dough a spray. So it should look like this. Then I'm going to teach you how to wrap your dough properly. It's going to double in size in the fridge before next class. Okay, so to wrap your dough, you're going to get the plastic wrap and make a long line of plastic wrap. Then you're going to set the bowl down and tightly cover the bowl. All right, then you're going to bring that plastic wrap around the bowl two more times, turn it like this so that it almost creates a T um, and make sure that it is very tightly wrapped on top. Here's how to check if you wrapped your bowl tight enough. Give it a tap. If it collapses in, that means you need to wrap it a little bit tighter. If it sounds like a little drum, then you are good to go. At this point, you are finished with day one, as long as you have also measured out that bag of brown sugar, cinnamon, and butter. Make sure that you label your cinnamon roll dough. On day one, you're also going to make the filling for your cinnamon rolls. So you're going to measure out one quarter cup of brown sugar, just like so. You're also going to measure out one teaspoon of cinnamon and put that in the bag. To make sure that you measured your brown sugar properly, it should hold its shape. As you can see, I've measured out my brown sugar. It held its shape. I also measured out the one teaspoon of cinnamon. And now what I'm gonna do is mix those up a little bit and then add some butter. Okay, so I mixed up my cinnamon and my brown sugar, and then we're actually going to be melting that separately when we make our cinnamon rolls and bake them. So I just left the wrapper on. It's gonna go in the fridge. Be ready for day two. You're going to need a rolling pin, oven mitts, and either a turner or tongs or both. First thing you'll do on day two is preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. For day two ingredients, you are going to need your dough. It should have about doubled in size, which mine has. Uh, you're also going to need your bag with your brown sugar, cinnamon, and that unsalted butter. 
However, you are going to separate and melt the butter from there in a small microwavable bowl. You're also going to need another small bowl full of flour that is just going to be used to lightly flour the surface while we uh, roll out our dough. Okay, so you all learned that yeast, the carbon dioxide that that produces is a leavening agent. So what that means is when the dough doubled in size, uh, it got those air pockets in there with those CO2 bubbles. So we're actually going to punch down the dough. You can kind of hear the air escape from it. I have a rectangular mat here. I'm actually going to lightly flour that so that I can use this as a guide for how uh, long and wide my cinnamon roll dough needs to be. At this point, I'm going to try and shape it as a rectangle the best that I can, and then I'm going to use a rolling pin. Here's a French rolling pin that I have at my house to roll this into about a 15 by 10 rectangle. I'll show you what that's gonna look like. Okay, so I've rolled out my dough. It's about this thin. Um, and you, when you roll out the dough, you wanna try and make it um, just about the same thickness all throughout. So uh, it's roughly the same size as this nonstick mat. However, it does say in the recipe to leave about an inch where there's no butter. So what I did was I rolled it out to the size of the mat and then I rolled an additional inch. See where this line is right here? That's about an inch where I am not going to put any butter. That's my no paint zone. But at this point, I am going to spread out the butter. You're gonna use gloves to do this on everywhere but the no paint zone. So you're gonna spread your butter out like that. I'm filming this with one hand and uh, spreading with the other. So this is the best I can do uh, until there's a thin layer of butter all over it, except for that no paint zone right up there. I'll be back. Once that butter is all painted on, you're going to take your cinnamon mixture and spread that again everywhere but the no paint zone, that inch at the end. When you have finished sprinkling the cinnamon sugar mixture, it should look just like this. At this point, you are going to take your dough here and start to roll it up. I'm gonna to have to do it with two hands, but you are going to roll it until the no paint zone. Then right there, you are going to pinch down the line to make sure that you seal off your cinnamon rolls. Okay, so I rolled it up and I do need to mention something. So over here, we need to make sure that you pull these sides out because this right here is going to be a cinnamon roll we're going to cut it like this um so where that no paint zone is it won't be slippery we're going to pinch here make sure again that you stretch that all the way over and then i'm just going to go through again Okay, so I went back through, I pinched it again, and then I made sure to seal it off. Um, you wanna make sure that your dough is roughly the same width in all parts of your cinnamon roll. So really rolling it out, taking the time to do that properly is going to give you a better end result. So this is how we want the cinnamon rolls to look. You are going to get a bench scraper now and cut them into equal parts. I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so like I mentioned previously, I'm at my house right now and I only have limited things. This was the biggest cutting board I had and this is the closest thing I had to a bench scraper. It's a pizza rocker. Uh, but what we are going to do first is slice this directly in half like that. Okay, okay. Now hear me out, we're gonna slice those halves in half. And lastly, we're gonna slice these in half. You just need to slice in one fluid motion and then you should be left with 16 cinnamon rolls all together. 
You will then arrange them on a prepared baking sheet. I have parchment paper that's a little bit over the edge so that um, cinnamon rolls are very sticky so that we can remove those cinnamon rolls without making a giant mess. Bake them for about 25 to 30 minutes. We're gonna check on these after 20. So set a timer for 20 minutes. All right, my 20 minute timer just went off. So I'm gonna take a look at them. They're still pretty pale looking, so I am going to leave them in for the full 25 minutes. Okay, so these are golden brown. I'm gonna take them out and let them cool for just a couple minutes and then top them with icing. When everything is said and done, your cinnamon roll should look roughly like this. Uh, go ahead and serve them up either with tongs or a turner. Enjoy!